Welcome to Roan State Community College. We are excited to be involved with the Mobile Learning Initiative. The following examples showcase faculty efforts to promote active learning. The library has been a essential partner, I think, in mobilization at Roan State for quite a few years. Um, the most faculty joined about a year ago when Dr. Ward um, opened up the doors and allowed faculty to request a free iPad with very few strings attached. The offer was to try something new in the class and to bring this new technology in and to play with it and kind of see what it could be useful for, how it could make the work of teaching more effective, how it could make workload more efficient, and ultimately the campaign's been about how to engage students. At Roan State, a faculty member can um, go through a really short little training session and can schedule use of an iPad cart that goes to their classroom when they need it for whatever purpose they need. We also have a collection of um, iPads that students can check out. One of the main reasons that I like to use the iPad during our labs is I divide the students into groups of three. One student has the role of the therapist. One student plays the role of the client and one student is the videographer and they use the iPad to record their skills. That way, when I'm not able to be with all of the groups at one time, I can spend time with each group individually. We review the video. We can see what the strengths are, where the areas are that need to be improved. We can point out those small details to help them to develop their skills. But more importantly, I think it allows the student to develop their own ability to self-evaluate. Working in groups, I have found, has been more beneficial than just individual um, because you always have, usually we'll work in two to three groups, uh, groups of two to three people, and the ideas that just bounce off off each other has been wonderful. I've also used just the iPad in terms of like polling for students. Some people are shy and don't really want to speak and so this way they can type their answers in or maybe they can you know respond to me and that way I know that they're getting the information. In the last five years we've changed our concert choir rehearsals to one night a week and while that's more convenient for them it's harder for them to learn the music. I used my iPad to to video our rehearsals little snippets of our rehearsals and then I upload them to YouTube and uh, that way they can log in anytime from anywhere and rehearse from home. One of the things we do we call Google Wars. If a student asks a question you know and I think it's a good research topic I have them get out the iPads and they Google it to see who can come up with the best answer. We use Apple TV for them to be able to actually project from their iPad onto our board and they will actually take over the screen from me or from another student until they come up and say, okay, this student's got the best answer we could find, which ultimately leads to a lot of discussion and I think gets the students engaged with each other. We use um, the iPad to download apps for future patients um, that might benefit them. And we've done everything from Pinterest a ton because we share ideas. I have like OTA pediatrics, OTA stroke, and then we can all share that information of articles or good ideas that we have found. Um, and also Digo. It's a bookmarking tool, so you can create these groups. So we'd be like OTA students or OT professionals that work just primarily with stroke care. And so they'll add all these articles and then you just go to one place to read all the articles about stroke. I have a lot of the functionality of the workstation without having to stand behind the workstation. I'm free to wander around the classroom um, and, and interact with students, be right there with them over their shoulders, show, show them certain things, let them try the poetic scansion on my iPad. Um, but basically I'm not um, this person behind a big workstation in the corner. I am a person in, moving around the room. I've already created some instructional videos. For example, how to administer a particular standardized assessment. They're very short, two to three minutes. What I would like to do is to have those videos um, associated with a QR code and to print one page of QR codes for the different uh, videos so that during the lab, if the student is confused, they can go, they can pull it up, they can review the video of me teaching the skill whether I'm there or not. So this is really going to support our distance learners. 
Adobe Connect has been huge, especially for someone like me. I have two kids at home. I have a 30 minute drive, which is not as far as some people, but um, you know, there have been days where kids are sick and it, if it had not been for the technology, if it had not been for Adobe Connect, I would have missed out on the teaching experience and being part of the lecture. Whereas with Adobe Connect, I have my headset with my microphone and I'm able to not only hear what's going on in the lecture, but I'm also able to participate through the chat box and through my microphone. Since everything's going digital and online, why not take advantage of it? Not only I have access to it, also students have access to it out of the classroom. A cadaver is very limited. There's only one cadaver. Students come look at it, they're done. Uh, but when you have this app available, uh, if they do wish to, to uh, download it, um, they have access to what I have in the classroom at any time. One of the apps we use a lot is a Muscle App. It will show the actions if I play the video. They can see what the muscles are doing. I can also stop it and pick a particular muscle and it will go ahead and give them the definition of the muscle, I can zoom in on it, I can make the muscle go away, this tells all the actions and whatnot, origin and search and those sorts of things. So um, it's a handy app and there's def different areas where you can peel off layers and they can see what's underneath this muscle and what's underneath the next one until they get down to the skeleton and helps them understand really how the muscles work together and that sort of thing. We know as education majors our students are going to go out into a field where that is constantly changing and their students are changing, their students are becoming more tech savvy, if you will, so we need our students to be prepared for that. It's not gonna be long before they're in the hands of kindergartners, and in some schools they already are. So we really need to make sure that our students are prepared for that. Mobile learning provides our faculty with the tools to engage our students in active learning. The excitement on our campus is contagious. We are pleased to share this information with you.